Hey there everyone, again taking a look at another exam objective for the Autodesk Certified User Certification and this of course is for Fusion 360. So we're going to take a look again at the drawing category and specifically we're just going to look at adding annotations in the drawing environment. So I'm going to move into Fusion 360. Here I've already have a drawing from a previous video already made so if you have not looked at the creating uh, drawing views video Go ahead and take a look at that before you get to this point. Really what this is gonna look at is what are the different types of annotations that we can create on drawings. So here, one of the things is here with geometry, so and shown previously is you can identify and place center marks. So you can always go through and add center marks by clicking the center mark tool and clicking whatever circular objects that you have that would represent or need a center mark as well. The other thing would be center lines. So center lines would be any time that you have a through hole and you wanna represent holes by having a center line being shown just like here in my screen that you're seeing right here as well. But as far as annotations go, under dimensions, you can choose, there are several types of dimensions that can be used. The, if you utilize dimension, dimension will go through and create multiple types of dimensions that are being noticed. So the other ones that are listed below are actually forcing it only to go through and to have a certain type of dimension. So like, for example, if I dimension the detail view and here I want this to be a diameter and this to be a radius. So Fusion picks it up by the arc, gets dimensioned by the radius and the circle is dimensioned by the diameter. And that's because of the American National Standards Institute or ANSI guidelines of how things should be dimensioned. So now, however, there could be some scenarios where I don't want this to be a radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and under dimensions, I'm gonna choose I want a diameter dimension. When I select the edge, it's gonna now force it to pull a diameter from whatever object that I click on. And so the same kind of scenario, if I want to go ahead and change this over to a radius to be represented, I can choose the circle and it'll give me the radius. So depending upon what kind of dimensioning you're looking for, that can be changed that way. So as far as adding, adding those annotations, as far as for the exam, these other like baseline dimensions, chain dimensions, arranging or dimension breaks are not gonna be assessed as much as much it will be, or even an ordinate dimension, as well as much as it's going to be looking at these specific ones. So like for example, linear dimensions or aligned dimensions that would get utilized for our exam objectives. So the other, only other option for adding annotations would be under the text option. And you can either choose to have text to where you can go through and just click to specify. It's like drawing a box. And then you can go through and type in what kind of uh, design or anything like that. So this is a tube hanger design. And over here on the right side, you can, so by selecting, highlighting the text, change the height of it. So for example, we could want this to be a quarter of an inch tall. We could want it to be bolded and we could want it to be centered. And then we could also add any other symbols by clicking here and just by selecting what we want and putting it into the, the text option. The other option could be, would be, would have as a leader note. So leader note would be like, for example, we need to make a specific note on here. So if I select an edge and click, same kind of principle as the text option, except for it adds a leader line with a with a uh, arrow that points to whatever that we're talking about. So here I could go through and talk about, you know, to, um, you know, uh, rounded edge, you know, watch for burring or something like that. So whatever might be the case, I could go through and have some different notes. And again, just kind of coming up with something there just to just to kind of deal with the annotations. The other one would be as well under the text is the hole and thread note. So bend notes are usually for uh, sheet metal, which is not assessed on the ACU exam, but hole and thread note could be an option. So like for example here, if I choose, you know, if any of these holes, none of the this object here was made with holes uh, from my particular part. So it might be one of those scenarios that I need to go back into my tube hanger. So I'm gonna move back to my part here. Uh, let me edit my sketch where I created this this circle rather than I did an actual hole. I'll finish the sketch. Let me create a hole here in the part. 
make sure it's concentric, has a diameter of one inch, goes all the way through. So you can see it has the exact same kind of part there. So let me hit save. And then when I go into my drawing, I'll update the file. And now you'll notice my radius of 0.5 has a little exclamation point. So let me delete that one. And now if I go to the hole and thread note, I can now select the hole and it will go through and pull the information from that whole command that I use to create it. So those are the typical really kind of uh, hole and thread node options that we can have. And let me go and replace the center line, I think, because so, and even here, it's not picking up the edges anymore. So those are going to be the kinds of things that, you know, you kind of have to watch for as you look at some of the uh, examination options. So what types of things can you do and what types of options do you have with being able to apply certain annotations to a drawing? So hopefully this was a good review and be able to get you prepared for the uh, Autodesk Certified User Exam for Fusion 360. If you have questions, email me and check out the next video for another exam objective for, for your preparation and hopefully your success.